anytime you utter the phrase, everybody make a perception check, you risk a crisis. This is metagaming 101, and most gamers are quick to outgrow the disconnect between characters' knowledge and player knowledge. However, I can remember a time before my group made that transition. So no shit, there we were. It was a high school game and I was a greedy rogue. I mean, the word rogue was right there at the top of my character sheet. So, QED, I must have been greedy. At least, at least, that's what the inference my colleagues at the table made. You see, we were of an age when stealing from the party coffers seemed like a good idea. Surprisingly enough, however, I wasn't the one doing the stealing. That honour went to my pal, the ranger. He had a solid little move silently score, and he thought it would be a good idea to skim a little off the top. Unfortunately for him, my spot skill was even better. So there he was, shoveling furtive fistfuls of coins into his pack. And there I was, lying still within my bedroll, eyes half-lidded, as precious gold glinted in the light of our campfire. I was the only one who had made the check to notice, and all eyes were upon me. I make no move. I pretend to sleep. The feeling of disappointment at the table was palpable. My buddies had expected alarms and accusations. Surely a greedy rogue wouldn't stand for this sort of thing. But I bided my time and waited for the next night. As expected, the ranger returned to the scene of the crime. Once more he rooted around within the loot chests during his watch. This time taking one of the pearls we plucked from the river troll's hoard. And once again, I was the only one capable of beating his move silently check. I make no move, I said. I pretend to sleep. But inwardly I grinned. That's because everything was going to plan. You see, I was a greedy rogue, but I was also a smart one. I had plans to gather evidence against this inexpert burglar. I would present him with the proof of his wrongdoing, and so make him my cat paws. You'll continue with this thieving business, I would say, but you're going to cut me in for 80%. Otherwise, I'm afraid, I'll have to present to the good Sir Smitesbury with certain proofs of your duplicy. And we both know how he loves to make an example of criminals. It was deliciously in character. It would be a master stroke of skullduggery. It wasn't meant to be. Hold on, said our DM. I don't think you understand what's going on here. He's stealing from the party's treasury. From you? Yeah, said Sir Smitesby. You're a rogue. You're all about golden stuff. Honestly, said the ranger. I feel like you're misplaying your character. Remember, folks, we were in high school. We had like three sessions of experience between us, and being an extremely mature teenager, I blew up at my friends and told them exactly how wrong and dumb they were. I believe we proceeded to kill some goblins and then not play together again for the rest of the semester. And if that seems like an unsatisfying anecdote to you, then you might understand how I felt playing through it. We all grow up one session at a time. I understand now, many years later, that it's tough to sit on your own hands and watch another player decide to do nothing with a perfectly good plot hook. If you ever heard tales of do-nothing players deciding not to warn the team that they spotted an oncoming dragon, discovered an important clue, or overheard a critical NPC conversation, then you know how frustrating it can be. So yeah, don't steal from the party. But equally important is the corollary, frigging do stuff. I love the game I'm running right now, and I've become great friends with all my players. But like an unplanned pregnancy, an existence and my responsibility for it were thrust upon me due to circumstances out of my control. Castless. Me, a humble player turned DM. Goth Asimar, big nerd and a longtime veteran of the RPG world, who constantly talked about running games in different settings but never followed through. Weeb Asimar, her partner and my best friend from college. We got along because we had opposite personalities. They were the crazy ones and I was the stern, judgmental one. I just want you to understand that their actions in this story are pretty par for the course. The four other players who are all lovely people. So Weeb Asimar contacts me about a cyberpunk game their girlfriend Goth Asimar is running, and I'm in. I show up at the Discord server, asking questions about the system and the setting. Goth Asimar is super excited to play with me. We've heard about each other for years via Weeb, and we're both excited to have this time to actually meet and to get to know each other. I ask how many people will be playing, and she says she wants to try and keep it super small. Three players, maybe four. 
She's doing a heist game and wants to keep it simple. However, Gothas Amar grows increasingly stressed out as more and more people show up. Acquaintances I hadn't spoken to in years popped up in the chat. It turns out that Weeb Asimar, trying to be helpful, had invited like everyone they knew to be in this game. In the end, there's a total of seven players. Goth was not prepared for a game that big. She's starting to freak out a little. And Weeb, again trying to be helpful, starts demanding that people leave the game. People who they invited, their friends and mine. Weeb singles out the people they think are less cool and says, three of you will need to leave the game. Name, name and name. Sorry. You can imagine being invited to a party and then being told that they actually don't want you there. The people they singled out are of course understandably hurt and pissed about this. Since they've been working on character sheets and had already gotten excited about playing the game together. I volunteered to leave instead, but Weeb says that no, the whole point of the game was for me to play with them. Goth is more mortified than ever now, and Weeb doesn't see how what they are doing is wrong. So in a moment of idiot's genius, I say, Hey, four of us will play Goth's game, and I'll run a separate game with all seven of you. And so a separate Discord server was born. One person dropped out, so I'm now running a game with six players. I'm unprepared and I scramble to come up with an adventure for them. I never GM'd a game on my own, so I'm a babe in the woods. I spend some time writing, and I come up with a scenario I think is playable. It's a fun fantasy story in D&D 5th edition about a wildlife rehabilitation group called OOPs, Outer Planet Owl Bear Protection Squad, that winds up in some misadventures above their pay grade. Simple and fun. We get character sheets created, all six players come up with something. And then I noticed the problem. Every single player has created an edgy, brooding, self-insert Mary Sue character. It occurs to me that most of them have little to no experience with D&D. And now I start to panic. Goth Asimar is playing, you guessed it, a Goth Asimar. An edgy warlock with a succubus patron and no morals or loyalties. Weeb Asimar is playing a plucky Bejojo Asimar, who looks exactly like them, but perfect with no flaws. The rest of the players, mostly noobs, have created a cast of edgelord loners. During our first session, I literally had to say, so actually, all the corners of the room are taken by other people right now. You could stand off and brood in the middle of the room or near one of the walls. <laughs> like every single player had their character hiding in different parts of the room at this company meeting, leaving my poor dwarf NPC standing by the cider bowls, panicking that all these new employees refused to come near. So, because none of the edgelord Murray Seuss wanted to interact, and when they did, it was only to drop some vague hint about their tragic backstory. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. I had to railroad them, kicking and screaming to the first game thing, an oil bear poacher with a stolen oil bear cub. However, Goth Asimar decided she didn't want to do her job, and instead went to the local tavern to try and scam the owner, so we split the party immediately. This caused the plot of the game to drag on a lot longer than it needed to, and Goth got frustrated because everyone at the bar was so nice to her, and it wasn't fun to scam them. Equally as frustrating was Goth and Weeb's constant flirting. Weeb was the worst offender here. They'd make a blatantly graphic sexual joke and then ask their girlfriend if she got it. And the rest of us would all be left creeped out by their weird, detailed, in-character PDA. We had to instate a no IRL flirting rule, which made Weeb mad. I really think flirting is too light of a term for what they were doing. It was more like foreplay, honestly. It made everybody even more uncomfortable. Anyway, due to all this, we didn't get to the first fight until like the end of the second session. After which, Goth and Weed both dropped out. Goth told me she was upset that everyone in the game was a cast of Mary Sue's, and that the game wasn't what she thought it would be. Weeb agreed that everyone was just too narcissistic and unfun. You guys were literally the worst offenders. Nobody was a bigger Mary Sue than you two. You're the reason it's not fun. So, long story short, once they were out of the game, I was now DMing an adventure with four players, which is ideal, who were all noobs but willing to learn and genuinely wanted to play my game for its own sake. We've been playing a few times a month for almost a year now, and we've become very good friends. I've become a much better DM, and they've become much better players. Our story is fueled by their relationships and whims and wishes. 
instead of just me railroading a bunch of empty vessels. We all grew together, and I'm proud of the story we're creating. Goth Asimar's cyberpunk game never came to fruition. Note, I'm still friends with Goth and Weeb. They're both super fun people, but I don't think I'd play another RPG either. I don't feel like I need to really say much here, but this is why weebs are pure cringe. Now, I, I get it, like, you know, anime. I'm not really a big anime person, just so you guys know. Um, I, I don't even watch JoJo. And, like, a lot of people have told me, mate, you need to go watch a JoJo. I watched the first few episodes and that's about it. It's just not for me, you know. But it takes next level. Like, you know, there's a difference between enjoying anime and being a fucking weeb. You know, and I don't think I need to tell you guys about it, just how cancerous weebs are, you know, and I'm 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 speaking from a pure neckbeard perspective here, you know, if even the neckbeards look dying on the weebs. Oh Jesus. Look, anyway, as always, look, just comment, let us know what you thought down below. I enjoyed this here we horror story one and the first one. I thought it was pretty good, the idea of like blackmail, I thought it was pretty cool. But look, uh, let us know what you thought down below. Remember comment, like, subscribe. All that other good stuff, check out the second channel, and I'll see you in the next video.